Hi subscribers and watchers, what's up? It's me, Vivs from SlideNerd here. In the previous video, we talked about the theory behind interfaces and polymorphism. And most of you couldn't really figure out what was going on because we didn't go into examples. In this video, let's take a look at the examples and then you can revisit the previous video again to make things better. So the example I have here is in NetBeans. There is this interface called Measurable, just like I said in my previous video. It has this variable which is a public static final variable by default and then it has which is pi equals 3.14 that's two methods get perimeter and get area now there's our class rectangle that implements measurable as soon as you see implement an interface you have to define all the methods that the interface has left empty at the top here so in other words our rectangle class defines the methods get perimeter and get area to return the perimeter of a rectangle and the area of a rectangle which is something with length and breadth over here same way we have our class circle which again implements measurable it has a single radius variable here and get perimeter and get area in this case are going to return the perimeter and area of the circle respectively in other words the idea behind making this interface is to give two methods that will work differently with different set of objects for a rectangle Probably the perimeter is 2 into breadth plus length and for a circle the perimeter is 2 into pi into radius So you can see exactly how an interface allows you to do multiple things in different ways In the classes, so let's take a look at what are the three things that we are going to cover here one We are going to talk about how we can use an interface reference variable to refer to an object that implements the interface two we are going to see a real example or usage of the scenario in one and three we are going to talk about type casting now let's see how we can create an object of this rectangle in different ways we can go to our main method here and we can simply say rectangle rect is new rectangle now this is the default way that you guys have been creating objects so far if you have a constructor then you can use a parameterized constructor here to pass the width and the breadth in my case, I don't have that, so I have to give the values here. I'm going to have to say rect dot breadth equals to 10 and say the height is also the same thing over here. So at this point, I have my object created and the values given. Now I can call methods on this, right? I can directly say rect dot, I can say get area or get perimeter. Now this is one way of doing that. I can also do it in a different way let me show you that if i remove this here actually let me make parameterized constructors so this simplifies our work very much so now i have my parameterized constructor for the rectangle class and the circle class that takes one argument and here it takes two arguments respectively now i can also make an object by saying measurable measurable now notice very carefully at this point if i go here and if i say new measurable then that cannot be done here if you put parentheses over here you will see it will give you an error it will say measurable is abstract cannot be instantiated you cannot create an actual object of the interface like we discussed previously however you can make this variable which is measurable measurable now this is not giving us any errors do you guys notice that if you go here if you simply say new rectangle here and if you pass the breadth as 10 and the length is 20 here this statement doesn't give an error in other words at this point What is happening is that there is a measurable variable on the left side and this variable actually points to a Rectangle object on the right side. Is this possible? Yes, it is because rectangle directly implements your measurable which is why this kind of assignment is possible if Rectangle did not implement measurable you cannot write this statement here. So why would we do this this is one of the biggest questions that beginners always have now let me before i actually go into the why part of it let me show you that you can also do this you can say new circle here and you can pass the radius as 25 and that would actually be a circle object being pointed to by your measurable variable here now why do you need to do this why would you even need this feature let's take a let's, let's understand this with a nice example that would be our point two a real usage of the above scenario where we have discussed now what I want to do here here is I want to add the area of two objects let's say that is the thing that I want to do so I can make a method here I can say public static void add area here right 
Now let's say I want to add the area of any two things. Now those two things can either be a rectangle, both can be a circle or first one can be a rectangle, second can be a circle or otherwise the whatever combination arises. Now at this point, if, I, if you guys were asked to do this, what would you do? You would probably say rectangle R1 and you put a comma, you'll say rectangle R2. You'll make one method like that. You would say, okay, let's use method overloading for a circle here. And you probably go here and you would say circle C1, circle C2. But remember, the two objects can be anything. The first is a rectangle. Second is a circle. That is also one thing you have to consider. The first is a circle. The second is a rectangle. That is also something you have to consider. In other words, to add the area of any two objects, you have to make four methods if you don't use polymorphism. But now, let me show you the magic with polymorphism here. So let me remove this. And what I'm going to do here this time is I'm going to be doing something completely different. I'm going to say measurable M1, comma, measurable M2. Take a look at that. I have simply interface variables that are being passed here. Now, the way I call this method is I'm going to go here and say add area. Now, I'm going to need two objects. Both of them must be measurable. So I can say something like rectangle R1 equals to new rectangle. And that can be breadth of 10, length of 20. There's a circle. Say C1 is new circle here. And again, that has a radius of say 10. And now I can directly say add area. I can pass R1 and C1 because an interface variable can point to an object which implements that interface. In other words, I can also make it C1 R1. No problems with that. C1 C1, both circles, both rectangles. I can try any possible combination because an interface variable would accept that. Now the way you add the area inside the add area method would be very simple. You would simply say m1 dot get area plus m2 dot get area. That's all you gotta do. And if you wanna store this inside something, you can probably say double area here. And then you can display that area by saying system dot out dot print ln total area, something like that. So let's run this and let me show you exactly what happens. Just press shift F6 and it says 400.0 is the total area. Now if you want details about it, of course, you can print m1.getArea to get the area of the first object, m2.getArea to print the area of the second object over here. So this is one of the reasons why you would stick to using an interface variable inside my class rectangle. If I have another method, say public void display, and let's not worry about the code inside this method. Now, when I create a rectangle object here at the top, I can go here and I can say r1.display. That's perfectly valid because the method belongs to the rectangle object, right? But here, inside my measurable, if I say m1 dot, you will notice that it gives suggestions only for get area and get perimeter. In other words, when you use an interface variable like this as a parameter, you can access only the methods defined inside that interface. So in other words, in our case here, measurable has only two methods that is perimeter and area. And those are the only methods which are accessible inside add area. Now I could go at the top and I can also do something like this. I can say measurable R1 equals to new rectangle. And then I can go here, make it measurable C1 equals to new circle. Now at this point, R1 dot again, it's going to give you only the two methods that the interface is aware of because at this point, on the left side, the variable you have is of type interface. And hence, when you say R1 dot and you're trying to call a method on the interface variable, it is only aware of those methods which the interface has defined. So at this point, I have removed most of the unnecessary stuff and I have my measurable R1 is new rectangle 1020. There is rectangle R2 is new rectangle 1020. So at this point, if I want to call the display method, if you remember inside rectangle, we have the empty display method. And if I want to say R2 dot, I can call display over here perfectly fine. But if I say R1 dot, I cannot call the display method because measurable variable has no idea about the display method inside its subclass. So what I need to do is I need to type cast R1 back to a rectangle. So I can say something like rectangle rect equals to R1. So at this point, there is an error. Now notice something very carefully. You know 
very well that inside R1 what you have is actually a rectangle object. And here rectangle rect equals to R1 should work perfectly, right? Why isn't it working? You'll have to perform a type casting. It says incompatible types. Measurable cannot be converted to a rectangle. However, you can go ahead and typecast it. Something like that. If you remember typecasting, the same thing applies here. What is the target that you want? The target that you want is rectangle. So put the target here inside the bracket and that's how typecasting works. So at this point things will work perfectly. You go here now if you say rect dot you can call display you can print get area get perimeter and everything at this point however if you do something wrong over here at the top if you go here and instead of new rectangle if you say new circle and if you put say 10 inside this now notice carefully what we have we have our measurable variable here this time it actually contains a circle object at the bottom here we are trying to convert the actual circle object which is inside R1 into a rectangle by performing this type casting. What do you think will happen when we run this code? Shift F6 it says exception in thread main java.lang.class cast exception. Circle cannot be cast to a rectangle. Hence you have to be careful about how you are type casting. To avoid such exceptions it is advised that whenever you perform this interface class kind of type casting you use the instance of operator. In other words, you can check something like this. You can say if R1 actually contains an object of type circle, then print that it's a circle, right? Otherwise, in our case, there are just two of them. There's circle and rectangle. But in real life, you don't have to write else. You have to go here. You have to say R1 instance of rectangle here. Then in this case, we are absolutely certain that R1 actually contains a rectangle object. So we can say rectangle rect equals to R1. Now we can perform the type casting without having to worry about the exception that is going to be thrown by your Java runtime over here. So just print that and you can now just say rectangle dot display and that will work perfectly. Now if you run this code here. It says it's a circle. Notice that the second if statement did not run because R1 actually contained a circle object. But if we change this back to a rectangle object and we put 1020 inside and now if you run the code, there is not going to be any output because display method does nothing. But this statement is true because R1 now contains some object which belongs to the class rectangle and that's how you can perform typecasting. Now last but not the least, let's go for the mind-blowing conclusion about interfaces and polymorphism. So here I have measurable R1 is new rectangle 1020. If I print R1.getArea, your JVM is going to be like, okay, R1 is the variable of type measurable. What object does it actually contain? It contains a rectangle. So what does the rectangle class have? If you go up here, the rectangle class has the getArea method. So it's going to be this getArea that will be called here inside your print statement inside your main over here so if you say r1.getArea it's going to be 10 into 20 it's going to be 200 however if you change this to a circle here which is the main point of polymorphism you go here you say circle here and if you print 10 for the radius now when you say r1.getArea your JVM is going to look at this and it's going to be like okay this time r1 actually contains a circle so I should call getArea from the circle class over here which means this is going to run which is pi into radius into radius which is 100 into 3.14 which I believe is 314 point something and there you go 314 that's our answer so this is how polymorphism works it doesn't matter what is on the left side what matters is what is actually contained on the right side by that particular variable so hopefully with this you guys have understood how interface polymorphism works why we need to have that interface variable pointing to an object that implements the interface and how we can use it in our real lives and ultimately about typecasting. If you like what you saw, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to Slide Nerd and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. And be sure to go and watch the previous video once again to get things straight inside your head. Have a nice day. Thanks for watching.